When it comes to traveling in China, bucket lists are, well, kind of pointless. You could spend a lifetime working your way through all the big ticket locations in search of the greatest sights and most epic of experiences. But I can assure you, such a quest will only leave you with more questions than answers. You see, the true essence of travel in China is diving into the unknown, allowing yourself to be swept away by events that no guidebook, or any video for that matter, could ever do justice. It sounds cliched, I know, but that is the realization I came to as I stood in a park in a random southwest Chinese city, listening to the legendary singing king give an impromptu demonstration of that most ancient of arts, Zhong folk songs. And in the same way that the sweetest travel experiences are often stolen glances of never to be repeated spontaneous moments, this is a tradition that we might well be the last to bear witness to. For its very existence is threatened by the quick swipe culture of China's modern city life. Which, in a sickly sweet dose of irony, could well be its savior. But we'll get to that. First, you must be wondering where the heck I am. Well, I've come to Guangxi, a province which I have in the past spent my fair time exploring, hopping from rice terrace to waterfall, pavilion to mountainside. But until now, never straying too far from the well-trodden tourist trail. And my word, am I glad I did because I came across a storytelling tradition that puts our humble videos to shame. Pretty much adopted by a village full of friendly people. Hi! <laughs> and got to meet the adorable protagonist of this little story. Where are we, Jack? We are in a little city in Guangxi called Hechi. And what have we just done? We just met the Ge Wang of Guangxi. Yes, the Guangxi Singing King. A literal singing king. He won the title in a competition and it's been crowned the King of Singing. Confusing, right? Well, the first thing you need to know is Xie Laoshe is an expert in Zhuang folk songs. The Zhuang are China's largest minority and have a rich history and an even richer tradition of storytelling. And no, we're not talking about stuffy old literary works. No, they share these stories in a much more accessible way. Yep, that's right. Here in Guangxi, the hills are very much alive with the sound of music. A song is the medium through which the Zhong express joy, celebration, and an appreciation of the world around them. As magical as it sounds, it's all a little alien to me. But in Xie Laoshe, we couldn't have found a better teacher. Oh my god, he teaches at an old people's college. How adorable! And in his spare time, puts on impromptu leaf blowing performances in the park. Yeah, I mean, that's a familiar theme, and one which, unfortunately, will keep cropping up in this video. But anyway, um, I don't know if you could still call me young, but I can definitely find the time to learn off you, Laosha. <laughs> yeah, I reckon I should leave it to the professionals, and I will stick to doing what I do best, which is eating all the tasty local food. Here in Guangxi, the locals are famed for their hospitality, so of course the Laosha insisted we join him for dinner. Yeah, 
Well, you did a fine job of ordering tonight, Lausha. This soup is so good. It's like super gingery and I love ginger and it's got fish in it and the fish is super light and also tofu, but honestly, the taste of it is heavenly. But the cow's stomach on the other hand, <laughs> it's a little bit chewy. And for dessert, well, the Lausha is gonna dig through his WeChat favorites to find some videos of some of his many achievements. Oh, I'm going to show you a new year. It's been 20 years. And then, before we knew what happened, we found ourselves in a car, hurtling through the countryside back to his village. What radio station are we tuned into? Radio Xie Lausha, it seems. He spent the entire journey singing into his phone. I wonder what the story is here. And then, he carried on once we got home. I can't help but wonder, is he currently engaged in a Dwe Gu? This is a phenomenon I had read about before traveling to Guangxi, for which there is no English word as far as I know. From what I can tell, it is basically a less threatening rap battle in which two singers spit improvised lyrics at each other, usually face to face I assume. But the Laosha and tonight's virtual partner, or should I say opponent, seem to have given this ancient art form a digital twist. So cute. These songs are adorable. And they do this all the time. He's been doing it throughout the day that we've been with him. He's been singing songs and other people have been singing replies to him. We've made multiple videos in the past describing the plight of the old people left behind in rural areas when all the young people moved to the cities to work. But it seems that social media might just be the tool they need to stay connected with their loved ones and keep these ancient traditions alive. You'd be forgiven for assuming that, given his status as a master of such an ancient art form, that he would be conservative, traditional, and possibly resistant to change. But I can assure you, in the time that we were in his company, barely a minute went by that he wasn't on his phone, taking calls, doing video chats, and in a remarkably cute scene, asking his young friend to teach him how to send some money to his mate. Oh, stop it. I can't take it. Too cute. See, you're never too old to learn a new skill. So his students actually sent him this voice messages. How cute is that? Although, I guess he hasn't quite mastered WeChat moments yet because he still keeps a big stack of photographs of the adventures his singing journey has taken him on. And he was very keen to show us. Oh, and if you're wondering why we keep referring to him as the singing king, in 1997, he outsung his competitors and was crowned the singing king of Guangxi. It's so cute and he's just achieved so much. He's gone to all these different things. He's gone to the Olympics. So amazing, he's super interesting. And then there was a little impromptu singing battle between him and his wife, and it was the most adorable thing I've ever seen. Absolute couple's goals. So cute, it's actually bringing a tear to my eye. They've been together for like 46 years and I hope me and Jack are still singing to each other when we are that old. Oh yeah, I'm sure we will, missus. Anyway, I reckon we should get off and leave the two lovebirds alone. Wait, what the f 
out in the shed. So things just got a little bit strange. The Lausha brought us into his garage to show us something. And I was thinking, what's it gonna be? Definitely didn't think it was gonna be this. It's like a huge pile of silkworms. So they make the silk and then they sell the silk to people. Like there's just loads of silkworms on the floor. Isn't that just crazy? I've never seen this before. And on that slightly surreal note, I think we should get some sleep. Because the Lausha looks absolutely knackered, bless him. And he has planned a busy day for us tomorrow. Sometimes I feel that social media is less of the social aspect and more of the media. We scroll endlessly for entertainment and amusement. But this group, this community that he's built, is definitely the social aspect. He's speaking to people around China that he's probably never even met. And I just love that not only are they making friends and building a community, but they're sharing their passions. Anyway, less of the whimsical stuff, because we are on a mission today. So I'd better find Jack and get going. Here he is. In the middle of the day, when the heat comes along, it's always us that are the mugs walking around when everyone else has gone inside to uh, have a nap, I think. Yep, this sweaty ass mission had better be worth it. Beautiful! These views are why you come to Guangxi. Well, yeah, but that's not the only reason we came though, is it, missus? So yesterday, the Laosha told us to come to this local Zhong minority village. Yeah, he mentioned that there was some kind of event going on, but the details were a little bit vague, to be honest. Yeah, but I guess that's the fun of traveling in China, am I right? Yeah, not wrong, but he's just sent us a uh, location pin to follow on WeChat, so I think we should go check it out and see what's happening. Yeah, let's do it! I can see lots of people around and I'm hoping that this is where we're meant to be. I think there's lots of people cooking around here. We need to get some food to eat. Okay, we found the Lausha, so we're meant to be here. And yes, I was right. First things first, food. Although on closer inspection, I think we might be a little early. I'm in the kitchen area. There's lots of preparation going on because tonight there is going to be a huge feast. And as is often the case in rural China, this seems to be very much a communal affair, with everyone chipping in to prepare an epic feast. Why, you ask? Well, that will soon become clear. So I'm not seeing many vegetables in here, but I have found this absolute fat bowl of chili, so maybe I'll just be eating rice and chili tonight. Just met up with the Lao Shou again. I think he just came here to uh, supervise the proceedings. There's so much going on here, and everyone's very concerned because it's getting a little bit late, and we haven't actually eaten lunch yet. They've given us exclusive try of the local blood sausage. They've cooked it up especially. It's hot though. Ah, oh, bit in my fingers. Mmm, that's really nice. It actually reminds me of black pudding at home, which is the same, blood sausage, because it's got little grains in as well, so it's got a bit of a kind of bite to it. I like this. This is really tasty. I'm excited for more tonight. And the chefs were very keen to hear my verdict. They're really good. It's really good. I actually really like it. I'm not joking, this is not for the camera. Mm. So I've been eyeing up this little fish stall since we got here because they sell bad fish and the guy was so nice and he just brought me some to try. I'm so excited. Oh, really tasty. I just need some chips now. Mmm, how do I? Anyway, as you can guess by the matching outfits, little food stalls and elaborate food preparation, today isn't a regular day in the sleepy little riverside village. Today happens to be the Mid-Autumn Festival, which is why the Lausha has popped along to perform. Details are slightly vague, and perhaps because this is a strong village, I'm yet to see a mooncake. But I am certain if we go with the flow, a good time will be had by all. Maybe we'll even get a chance to chat to our old mate again, if we can tear him away from his flock of adoring fans. 
。你长大的以前，你的老家、你的村像这个吗？没有这么漂亮。以前都是我爷爷那个年段，我的家是草屋。今天他在他这里搞中秋节，有很多人，他在风风景里也很优美。哟，我们谢老师给外国朋友编首歌吧，欢迎他今天来到我们贫穷。唱歌的以前你是什么行业？我是做农民的。我的家家人是农民，从我爷爷过来都是农民。我的孩子他们都去打工，一边打工一边买那个楼房在那里住，他们就不回家了。以前他们也唱歌，就是现在打工了就没有时间来来唱了。the bamboo raft is insured because its passengers are some of the last remaining bastions of this great art form. But on a positive note, the Laosha's two lovely singing companions from a nearby village offer an example of how the younger generation can combine ancient traditions with modern technology to earn a living, without leaving for the city. Don't worry, this is just a slight detour and we'll pop back to the village festivities shortly, because a curious turn of events is about to take place. But first... Yep, that's right, they are live streaming via their WeChat channel to help local farmers sell their products to a wider audience across China. And from what I hear, they are pretty good at it, which goes to show that technology and tradition aren't necessarily foes, but can be complementary to one another. So they're spreading their local Zhong culture through song and through their products to reach a wider audience in China, which is just amazing! And don't worry, Jack, they'll have a chance to rest as next on the program is. Well, I'm yet to figure that out. Everybody is all dressed up and looking amazing. Judging by their costumes, maybe a spot of amateur theatrics? Oh, there is. Ah, Liu Sanjie. For those of you who, like me, haven't seen the 1960 film, which made her a household name across China, we'll do a quick recap to bring you up to speed with Guangxi's most famous sister, who was born in a village not too far from here. So behind me, you can see the home of our hero, Liu Sanjie. I think maybe this town has been altered just a little bit for tourism purposes. <laughs> To put it in perspective for a Western audience, Liu Sanjie is like the Zhong Robin Hood, who stood up for ordinary people in the face of injustice using her voice instead of a weapon. An evil landlord tried to force her to be his concubine, and after she escaped, he took out his wrath on the villagers who protected her. Where are we, Jack? We are in the house of the original heartless bastard, Moore. Now, Moore was the evil landlord who was trying to keep our unlikely hero, Liu Sanjie, down. In order to protect them, she threw herself into a lake to kill herself. But as soon as she hit the water, a giant carp carried her up to the heavens, where she became an immortal. Here in Guangxi, the locals go to great lengths to preserve her legacy by passing on her songs to future generations. Anyway, we should head back to the festival because we have got a very important man to meet. Hi! Hi. Nice to meet you! Hi. Nice to meet you! I'm very happy to meet you! I'm very happy! This is my first conversation for English. Wow! For, for, for us. Meanwhile, I take my eye off Jack for one minute and he has already been stolen away by the local ladies. Whew! Alright, I think I'm safe. such a beautiful place to have a concert, like in the middle of Guangxi. So cute, aren't they, all these kids? Yep, pretty cute, but I'm quite happy to leave Jack on childcare duty while I sit down for a hot sec. But whew. You think it's very beautiful and not beautiful? Yes. Wow, what an idyllic part of the world this is. 
，风景真的很好啊。对呀、啊，嗯，好看。这有山有水的。我的老家比你们的老家不漂亮。I don't know how you managed to concentrate with all these boys around you. Well, you know what? This is the life of a married man. It prepares you well for blocking out unwanted distractions. <laughs> yeah, he's very good at blocking out me, that's for sure. Anyway, enough messing around. It smells like the banquet is ready and the Laosha will be devastated if we miss it. Laosha is very worried that we're not eating. Look at this amazing table. It goes all the way back. We've got lots of little kids around us. So she... Hello. 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 I saw the woman making it earlier. I'm still not like, sure what it actually is. It's like a bowser, but with the consistency of tofu around the outside. Head tail, right? Good fish. I really enjoyed sitting elbow to elbow with all our new friends. Yeah, everyone was so nice and welcoming and trying to feed us all the things. And also, you know, we get to enjoy the singing as well, which is and the, which is why we're here, basically. <laughs> Given how welcoming the villagers have been, it would be easy to stay here long into the night. But I think a safety demonstration from the local police is a sign that things are starting to wind down. We've been telling stories for thousands of years. Before we could read or write, we would tell stories to each other. We would share fables, poems, and even folk songs. Teaching people lessons and talking about past heroes. Now, storytelling has entered the digital age. So instead of gathering around a storyteller, we might listen to a podcast, watch a YouTube video like this one, or share stories on our phone. This means that stories that have been passed down in the same culture for hundreds of years can now be shared all around the world.